Hey there, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today I want to continue working with the stepper motors that we've been working with. Today we're going to actually look at code and see how these things work. I'll put some links to the previous ones up in the corner over here. Go ahead and take a look at those, get some background on the steppers. Uh, but right now, let's just dive into getting some of this done. You can see uh, here on the desktop, I've got my microcontroller. We're going to be writing code that runs on it. We'll be writing C sharp. This is my level shifter that's going from the 3.3 to 5 volt that the drive down here requires. And then I've got the stepper motor here with a flag on it just so we can watch what it's doing. So let's go over and take a look at some code. Just going to create a new Meadow application. We'll call it Motor Test. So the default application's got a bunch of stuff in it that we actually don't care about. Right now, the way I have this wired, I have D14 and 15 hooked up. 15 looks like it's the green wire connected over so the green is our pulse or our step, and then yellow is our direction. We know that these need to be uh, in a normally high state, and the drop it to low and then come back high is what will cause it to uh, step. So we'll start them both as true. Helps if I put them in the right spot. So what we'll start by doing is just stepping it and, you know, doing a step waiting, doing a step just to make sure that it works and to understand the step procedure. So what we're going to do is we need to drop that line low, then we're going to wait a millisecond and then bring it back up. The rising edge is how we have it configured in order to step. So what it's going to do so when we go that low and then back to high, that's going to cause one step of the motor. So what we'll do is we'll just infinitely step and then wait a second, step, wait a second. I have not changed the direction at all or set it. So it will start up in whichever direction it is that it's configured, probably clockwise. So let's just deploy this and see what it does. Now you can see here that we're just ticking along once per second. So I'm going to let that continue to run and let's go ahead and update this code. So we know that it's behaving and ticking along. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to rotate it to a specific amount and then rotate it back. So let's just go 90 degrees. So we'll start up turn clockwise 90 degrees, then turn counterclockwise 90 degrees. Right now I have the drive configured for 200 steps per rotation. So 90 degrees is a quarter of that, so 50 steps. So we'll set the direction to true, which again I think is probably clockwise here. Then we'll do 50 steps. Then we'll wait a second. And then I'll be lazy and just copy and paste. And we'll change the direction and then do 50 steps. So this should just go clockwise for 90 degrees, then counterclockwise for 90 degrees. So let's try that. And there you go. doing exactly 90 degrees each direction. That's all there is to it. It's extremely easy. So using just this simple logic of driving that direction and state or the direction and uh, step GPIOs high and low, we can actually make this motor do just about anything we want. Rather than showing you how to do that again, here in this code, I'm going to show you a library I created, which is in the Meadow Foundation uh, library set that gives us a whole bunch of these features just out of the box. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in the NuGet package that gives us the GPIO stepper motor function. So let's add that. We'll install it. Now we can come back to our app. And instead of using these ports directly, we're going to create a stepper. And we're using the step dir version. That's just how we have this drive set up. There is also a clockwise counterclockwise version of this. We give it these two ports, just the same as before. Now we can give it an optional port for an enable line. There is an enable feature on this drive. We can turn it on or off so that even if we pulse it, it will not move if it's off. Right now I have it not even wired up and by default enable is on on this drive. And then this last parameter we have to give it is the number of steps per rotation. And right now I have this configured for 200. So let's replicate the behavior that we just had where we rotate one direction, wait, and then rotate back. Instead of going 90, we'll go 180 so it looks different, so we can tell that it isn't the old code running. So really all we do is we tell it to rotate. Here we can tell it the number of steps, or we can actually give it the angle to rotate. And let me zoom in so you can read this just a little bit better. So we're going to rotate 180 degrees. And we're going to start out going in the clockwise direction. And it actually asks us for an angular velocity. So how fast do we want to rotate? I'm just going to pick, well, let's say five revolutions per second, somewhere around there. This is an async method, so we're going to await it. Then we'll wait for a second. Then I'll just cheat and copy this, and we'll go back counterclockwise. We'll get rid of our previous code. So now we're doing clockwise 180 degrees, wait a second, counterclockwise 180, wait a second. So now let's deploy that. And there you go. Now we're doing 180 degrees clockwise and then counterclockwise as it runs through that loop. So this stepper here, this driver, provides us a whole lot of additional things. Just to give you a quick flavor of some of the other functions, we can just use run. That will run in a specified direction and speed until we give a, a cancellation through the cancellation token. We can do run for and give it a time. So let's say we want to run for three seconds or five seconds, however long you want. You can tell it to run again, give it a direction and a velocity for a specific amount of time. We can use the rotate function, just like we see currently here, where it rotates a specific amount, so we can tell it an angle. We can also rotate a number of steps. So since we know that this is 200 steps per revolution, we could, instead of doing 180 degrees, we could have done 100 steps. We also have this go to, and so this is a go to a position. If you assume that when the motor starts up, that position is zero, we can then say go to a specific position like 90 degrees, and it will rotate to 90 degrees clockwise from that startup position. Or you could say go to 270, and it's going to go to the, you know, 90 degrees counterclockwise. You can tell it what direction and speed to go, or you can actually tell it just to go and give it a velocity and it will pick the shortest path. 
So if you're at zero and you say go to 270, it will go counterclockwise 90 degrees. Or you can force it and say go to 270 in the clockwise direction and it will do that. So basically we've got functions that allow you to drive this motor for just about everything that I could think of. Run forever, run for a specific amount of time, turn a specific number of steps or a specific angle, or you can tell it to go to a specific set position from a known zero. So that's it. It's quite simple, real easy to use. Hopefully it covers all the use cases. If you've got something that I've uh, not thought of, by all means, let us know. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.